Hey everybody, it's Dr. Brian Mole, the Diabetes Coach, and I'm back this week with another episode of On Call with Dr. Mole. And today's question comes from Jill in Alaska. And Jill says, how do I know if I'm in adrenal burnout? And if so, what do I do about it? So Jill, this is an interesting and common question I get. And uh, first, I just want to clarify the terms. Adrenal burnout is sort of a slang term. What you're referring to is called adrenal dysregulation. And it has to do with uh, the hormones released by the adrenal glands. The adrenal glands are small glands that sit on top of your kidneys. So if you've ever heard the word renal referring to kidneys, these are the adrenal glands. They sit on top of the kidneys. They're about the size of a walnut each, and we have two of them. And there's several parts of the adrenal glands. The different parts make different hormones. So there's the adrenal cortex, which makes cortisol, uh, a hormone known as a glucocorticoid hormone that helps us regulate and control blood sugar and is partially responsible for the fight or flight mechanism, the stress mechanism. Uh, it's involved in many uh, very important functions that wake us up in the morning and help us regulate um, our blood sugar, as I mentioned, our energy levels, our muscle uh, contraction and tone and so forth, lots of things. Uh, the other part of the adrenals is the adrenal medulla, and the adrenal medulla makes uh, two hormones uh, related to stress called catecholamine hormones, as well as dopamine, and these are adrenaline and noradrenaline, or epinephrine and norepinephrine. These are also part of the fight or flight or stress response. Adrenaline is kind of like the first responders for the stress response. Uh, when we're stressed, we, we release adrenaline, which gets a, our heart pumping, uh, changes our blood supply, uh, affects our vision and muscle tone, and our digestion and so forth. It's part of that fight or flight response, as I mentioned. And then cortisol sort of comes on the scene a little bit slower, and it maintains that high level of attention for uh, prolonged periods of stress, which oftentimes we have. So uh, in a very short term situation, let's say we're being attacked by a bear or uh, we have some sort of uh, immediate stress that we need to respond to, adrenaline and cortisol are released and help the body to uh, fight that or to flee. And that's what they're supposed to do in conjunction with the nervous system. But in this day and age, in today's world, we have chronic stress. We're sort of always under some level of stress. And in fact, we can be under prolonged periods of pretty high stress. And this wears us out. It taxes our adrenal system. So uh, it can affect the way our adrenal glands function. Now, full-blown adrenal uh, burnout or uh, adrenal insufficiency is called Addison's disease. It's a condition that leads to destruction of the adrenal glands and very little, if any, production of these hormones. That's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking about low or aberrant adrenal function where your adrenal hormones could be up and down, high and low, or low. And so some people call that adrenal fatigue or adrenal burnout. Uh, really, it's adrenal dysregulation or adrenal dysfunction. So how do we know if we're in adrenal dysfunction or dysregulation? You can look at symptoms. If, for example, you're very tired around the clock, or you wake up tired, uh, and you feel like you're sleeping, but you're still exhausted in the morning, uh, or you drink coffee and you get more tired, that's often a sign of adrenal dysregulation. Perhaps when you stand up, you're not able to accommodate the change in position with elevation of blood pressure, because your adrenal glands aren't working well, so you get dizzy or lightheaded. That's a sign of adrenal dysregulation. If you crave salt, interestingly, that's a sign of adrenal dysregulation. And another one is something referred to as being wired and tired. So you're tired all the time, but you have a hard time sleeping. You feel wired at all the wrong times. That's another sign of adrenal dysregulation. And then lastly, of course, as I mentioned, blood sugar problems, especially the dawn effect where you have a high first morning blood sugar that is unexpected. That's often due to dysregulated adrenals where you're not able to properly regulate your blood sugar. Now, there are some tests that you can do 
to check for adrenal dysfunction or dysregulation. And the one I recommend most is a 24-hour salivary cortisol test called a cortisol rhythm. And this is typically done with four or more saliva samples, one first thing in the morning, one around noon, one later in the afternoon, and one in the evening. And then sometimes there can be additional tests done. Cortisol is very accurately measured in the saliva and correlates well to blood tests. And it's much easier to access saliva multiple times a day than blood. We also don't have to worry about eliciting a stress response, which needles can do to some people. So four saliva samples throughout the day, and that gives us a rhythm. Your cortisol should be highest in the morning and then drop almost in half about every four or five hours. So around noon, it's coming down, or in the evening, mid-afternoon, it's coming down even more, and then before bed, it should be very, very low as you're preparing to go to sleep. If we see any variation of that pattern, like for example, sometimes it's paradoxical where we'll see the lowest cortisol in the morning and the highest cortisol in the evening, that's dysregulated adrenals. Sometimes we'll see it low across the entire day, or we'll see a small peak in the midday range, or we'll see it drop too far between intervals. These are all signs of adrenal dysregulation. So what do we do about adrenal dysregulation? Well, if it is in fact low cortisol and or low adrenaline, then the most important thing to do is go into a healing, rest, and recovery program. Easier said than done, but it's very important to give your adrenals a break. So I recommend ceasing caffeine in this situation. I'm a big fan of coffee and caffeine, but not if you have adrenal dysregulation. You're gonna to have to really focus on restorative exercises, things like Tai Chi, Qigong, gentle forms of yoga. You're gonna probably wanna cease any type of intensive exercise like sprint training or high intensity interval training and you're gonna to wanna to focus on rest and relaxation. If you're tired, rest and sleep. And you wanna give yourself six to 12 months at least to heal your adrenal glands. There's some supplements and botanicals that you can use as well. Adaptogenic herbs have been shown to be very helpful. Things like ashwagandha, rhodiola, eleuthero, holy basil or tulsi tea, Siberian ginseng and lavender are all really powerful, helpful adaptogenic herbs. You can use them in tea form or you can take them in dry herb form or tincture form. And it's best to do these multiple times per day. If your adrenals are really dysregulated and exhausted, you may need some adrenal food that's an adrenal glandular supplement, which actually is taking adrenal gland from various animals. Sounds strange, but it's been shown to be effective in combination with certain vitamins and other nutrients like vitamin C, for example, and certain B vitamins, which can be very helpful to support adrenal function. Tyrosine has also been found to be helpful and adding salt. I recommend getting some Himalayan sea salt rocks and putting them in water and drinking some of that salted water several times a day to improve the health of your adrenal glands. I can't overstate the fact though that you need to rest. You need to listen to your body and you need to go into a restoration and recovery program that's gonna allow your body to heal, that's gonna allow your adrenals to reset that's gonna allow you to rebuild that vitality, that constitutional energy that you're missing right now if you're in adrenal dysregulation and exhaustion. And if you just keep pushing yourself with caffeine and other stimulants and sugar, or you look for some natural alternative to boost your adrenals without actually healing your body, it's only gonna make things worse. So I hope that information helps and if you need more help from me, go to my website at drmole.com. Sign up for my newsletter where I share healthy recipes and other tips and strategies every single week. Plus, you'll hear all about our newest and most cutting edge programs that we have for you to help improve your health, blood sugar, and healing. 
This is Dr. Brian Mole, the diabetes coach, with another on call with Dr. Mole. God bless everybody and have a great week. Bye bye.